Hello, my friends, and welcome to MB Shoe Doc, where we take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. We will be covering the art of patina and shine and learn to breathe new life into old shoes. So grab your dyes and polishes and get ready to get your hands dirty, and let's dive right into today's project. Hello my friends, another day, another project. This is on an Alan Edmonds Cornwallis. This was a, an eBay find of a friend of mine. Yeah, look at this, hardly any wear on these. You know, a little bit of creasing here on the vamp, but really this is a, a pretty fantastic looking shoe, great condition. So, Alan Edmonds Cornwallis, we're gonna do a custom patina on these. So, as always, we're going to start by removing the laces. Next, let's get some tight-fitting shoe trees here. So you don't want it too tight, you know, I don't want to uh, change the shape of the shoe, but nice tight fitting tree filling in this space is going to really help with the creases All right, so got the shoe trees in got them brushed now we're going to strip the shoes with acetone so just taking regular old cotton balls again the gloves i'm using are dishwashing gloves They're pretty cheap got them from the grocery store like a two pack for like three bucks something like that very inexpensive very durable and perfect for the stripping part. And I use thinner gloves for doing the patina work, uh, but the acetone will eat right through those thin latex gloves, so it doesn't work. You can see what it is removing. I love working on Alan Edmonds Walnut. It is just a fantastic color and leather to work with. It strips easily, it takes dye well and predictably. So for anybody looking to do some patina work themselves, if you can find a pre-owned pair of Allen Edmonds in Walnut, any model, that's really a great place to start. You know, your temptation would be to start with a cheaper shoe and I can see the appeal there because you don't want to ruin the shoe and I think that's an okay strategy the problem is a cheaper shoe with cheaper leather is actually harder to work on than a nicer shoe and so the problem is the patina might not work out well and it's not your fault it's garbage leather and so you're gonna get frustrated and feel like you don't have what it takes to do patina and I would say that you were wrong. I think you were starting with a, a more difficult shoe. So, you know, Allen Edmonds Walnut, again, probably one of the easiest shoes to work on. And, you know, even if you're, if you're getting a bad result, typically that can be uh, turned around. I mean, you can send it to, uh, to me or another patina guy. Typically we can fix whatever mistakes you made and get you a good result. But, you know, I really feel like anybody can can do this at home themselves and end up with something that they're proud of. So that's my recommendation. I think they're looking good, ready to add some color. So these are going to be uh, kind of an emerald green museum style patina. So I've got a custom mix of green. It's kind of a a fibings green but I diluted it a little bit. I'm just going to take this uh, round brush here and this is not a, an expensive brush or anything special. This is just an inexpensive craft brush but a round bristle brush. Dip it in there and I'm going to kind of wipe it off on this cotton ball because I don't want the brush to be too saturated. And as I've done some of the other uh, kind of museum style patinas it, the dye goes on kind of kind of splotchy on purpose. And just 
kind of a random pattern. And because this is a diluted, you're going to see that it's going to kind of dry up uh, pretty quickly, absorb pretty quickly, and not be uh, just super saturated in color. So I use rubbing alcohol mixed with the dye. Alright, so I got the eyelets taped off on the underside. Um, moving on to a second round of dye. This is a little bit darker mix. This has got a little bit of Saphir dark green mixed in with it. And I'm just going to use this for right now. Just around the base of the shoe where I want it to be a little bit darker. And I'm just trying to go and blotchy pattern so just concentrate on the lower part of the shoe alright so let this dry overnight and there's still just a little bit too much yellow uh, showing through because of the base color, the base tan. But I don't want the overall shoe to get too dark, so I don't want to keep going at it with the green. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of this fibing turquoise. Now it looks, the dye itself looks pretty dark blue. But uh, when I try it on a piece of paper, something like that, it's actually pretty light. And so I'm taking a cotton ball. I'm just dipping it into just a little bit of dye. And then real thinly, I'm just kind of spreading this across. Real quick, real thin. What I'm just going to do is get some of these areas that are a little bit more yellow and just faintly put some blue to them and you'll end up with a little bit of a green undertone which is exactly what I want. So it's going to take away some from my uh, modeled appearance and that's okay. Um, I can go back over it and make that a little bit uh, you know, more bold later but and truthfully, if, you know, if I could do this one over, what I'm doing right now, I probably would have done that to start with. I would have taken this little bit of blue and just gone over the entire shoe lightly just to eliminate that tan or walnut base color. So now just to compare the two. So here's the one where I went over the entire thing with that blue compared to this one. It's a much more speckled appearance, but a whole lot more yellow. This one, overall shoe, has got more of a green coloration, and I'm liking this much better. So I'm going to do the exact same thing to this other shoe. Still has a you know a nice marbled appearance, but again just a little bit less bold. But this is a better uh, platform or base color now to work with, and so now I can kind of accent a little bit further. So yeah, glad uh, glad I tried that. It's nice to have these little things come up to to be able to show you, but a little bit too marbled. And again, it would take forever to just do it with splotching, and I'm afraid it would darken it overall. So. I think that worked out very well. We'll get them both done and come back to it. A couple other little areas that are kind of tough to get around the broguing here. So I have a very flat brush. All I did is shake the, uh, the dye just to get a little bit in the cap. And I'm just going kind of thinly, and this is again that turquoise blue along the 
brooding here. There's still some visible tan. much better pretty happy with that for now probably gonna be looking at um, going with this darker uh, green some more along the bottom next here So I'm picking back up with this um, diluted green. It's the fivings green and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And it looks very dark when I wipe it onto the cotton ball, but I'm trying to go with a drier brush, thinning it out, and it shouldn't be too dark on the shoe. It goes on looking darker but because it's so diluted it kind of dries up evaporates real quick it'll end up looking a fair amount lighter than this so after adding a number of layers of dye I always like to use BIC4 so this is going to recondition the leather and it removes a little bit of surface dye, anything that hasn't been absorbed into the leather. And it gives us a better idea of what the true color is. So we're going to wipe these down. Let's see what we're looking like. I always like to let it sit overnight. Uh, before I do this so it doesn't remove too much dye. I'm going to let it dry and absorb as much as possible. Um, you can use Renovateur, Pure Polish, Venetian Shoe Cream, any of these conditioning lotions uh, will work. I like Big 4 purposely because it um, removes the least amount of dye. Now, there's been a few times where I purposely wanted to remove some dye and then I'll use a different um, conditioning lotion in those instances but for general use I really like this the best for uh, patina work sat for a bit, giving these a little brushing, and we'll adjust the color here. What I'm going to look at doing, and I actually kind of started on this one, have a little bit of darkening around the broguing here. So what I've got is a custom green, kind of an emerald green that I'd use on another uh, previous project. I'm going to use that for the broguing. So this emerald mix, this emerald mix has got a little bit more blue in it. And it's a little bit darker. Too. 
Right, so I have gone with a little bit of navy blue now. And I'm just using this to kind of darken even further at the base here. Contrast at the bottom. All right, I've had these sitting overnight again. Use the big four one more time. As I've said in the past, this is just removing any, any dye that's remained on the surface of the shoe. And it does help to give a truer color. You can get kind of a hazy uh, surface to the leather and not see what the true color is underneath that until you wipe it down. Excess sheen off of there. And then you can kind of adjust if you need it to be lighter, darker. So we're completed with the dye work on the uppers here. Last thing I'm going to do is along the sole, the welt. Going to use Angelus. This is coffee, so really, really dark brown. I'm just going to go along this uh, sole edge here. You know what? On a whim here, I decided we're going to do something a little bit fun. We're going to customize this sole. Now, this client did not ask for this so you know, I've taken a small risk here in modifying the sole but you know since we're going a little bit uh, more wild on the uppers this green color I think we're pretty safe to uh, add some color to the sole I don't think we're worried about uh, you know this not fitting in with the work environment etc now if this was a more relatively mild patina, yeah, that might be a little higher risk to, to do something funky with the sole, but on a green shoe, I think we are pretty safe here. So we're gonna go for it. So, using the acetone, just like I do on the uppers. Get some color off of this. Came off pretty easily. do kind of a marble patina similar to what the uppers have going on. Alright, so we've got the soles stripped. Much lighter tan than what they were before. I'm going to use this Fibings Green again. I'm just applying it to a cotton ball here. That absorbed a little faster than I was expecting. That really took quickly. I was thinking I'd be able to swirl that around a little bit more, but that is okay. We will work with it. Custom mixed emerald green that I used earlier on the uppers. Take that round brush. Add a little bit of variation to this. All 
All right, now we're gonna use the navy blue. A little bit uh, finer brush. Maybe go just along the, the welt here. Let's just try to get into the cracks a little bit. That'll be pretty cool once I uh, wipe that off. All right, I'm gonna look at add a little shine to these. Using these uh, shine cloths from uh, my friend Dornstar Shines. So he's got a YouTube channel. You have to check him out. But he sent uh, sent me some uh, cool shine cloths. I'm enjoying these. So I'm using Saphir Mirror Gloss in Neutral. Trying to add a little bit of toe shine on here. Now typically I try to go kind of light with this, it can strip a little bit of color off if you're not careful, so you don't want to rub it too hard. Same on the heel area. Looking to add just a tiny bit of darkening to the toes. So I'm using this black wax from Carmina. I'm not looking to do too much, but I did a couple layers of the mirror gloss in neutral. So now I'm just lightly going over this with the black. Hoping to darken up the toe just a touch. And also to bring out even a little bit more shine to it. Alright, so here is a custom Alan Edmonds Cornwallis. Just finished up in this emerald green. Now I had already finished these up uh, but then the client really wanted a little bit darker uh, burnishing down towards the welt line and honestly I kind of agreed I wasn't 100% satisfied with how it looked myself so I took them back had a little bit uh, darker burnishing liking it quite a bit better now and a little bit of custom sole work as well, just for fun. And we also did a custom belt to go with it. So this was a tan Anson belt. Custom dyed. match up with the shoes. So I think that works together uh, quite well and I think you'll be uh, happy. I'm definitely pleased with how these turned out. So hopefully you like seeing these uh, kind of projects, these custom patinas, the restorations, the shines. Uh, so please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks again.